Hi guys and welcome back. Today I want to talk about layer ones and most of all I want to talk on how new players are coming into this industry and why this is really significant and can affect and change completely the market as you know it. And I will present to you I think seven new uh, blockchains that are coming right now and I will explain what is peculiar by them, so stay tuned. Guys, let me say that this channel is about educational content and nothing has to be intended as financial advice. If you want to invest in anything, that's great, but do always your own research before. And guys, don't forget to check all our links into the description below where we uh, share our week newsletter, our Twitter account, that is the place where we add new content about analysis, updates, and so on. So don't miss that opportunity, it's completely free. And guys, don't forget to leave us also a big thumbs up and drop a comment in the comment section. And also let me know if there is another blockchain that is promising that I haven't talked about that I should know about. Let me know it into the comment section below. Okay, guys, let's start with this interface by Messari. I have simply um, filtered all the different assets by infrastructure. Usually when we talk about infrastructure, we mean the uh, first, the fundamental, the basis of any industry. When we talk about cryptos, we talk mainly about new blockchains, layer ones and layer zero. Obviously, when we talk about layer zero, we have been talking about several layer zeros. Uh, we mean the level that is able to enable different communication among different blockchains. And that's the major topic about cross-chain. I will not talk about it today. I will simply focus on how the market is changing and why you should pay attention to your personal uh, portfolio management. Because let's have a look to this uh, uh, rank. As you can see, most of us are investing in all of the um, let's say top five, top six, someone is investing in top 10 uh, layer ones. Why? Because obviously if blockchain will succeed, if this technology will succeed, the first, the assets that will have the highest value in terms of a uh, fully diluted valuation will be obviously the infrastructure because without the infrastructure it's not possible to have any application that is running into the blockchain space. That's the reason why also Ethereum, many people are betting on ETH, ADA and Solana, DOT and so on. The point, and this is not just to provoke you, but I want to invite you to start thinking or better rethinking completely how and what you are thinking about the layer ones. I want to invite you to be aware that most of them and I'm saying in this long rank, as you can see, there are hundreds of different layer ones right now, but most of them, even in the top 10, will die soon. Why? The main reason is that, as we have said many times, bear market is for builders. And it means that during this phase, the fundamentals, the technologies that are available will change. Why? Because uh, new incumbents, people that are projects that are starting right now or better have started in the last couple of years, they will be able to take advantage from this situation because they will be able to learn from the mistakes that other project has done in order to solve these problems and be ready for the next bull run. Because you need to know two different principles that are in our mind. First one, we are having some kind of resistance to change. The point is that at the same time, and that's the second point, we love to try something else and we are trusting more something new for the simple reason that we have still the hope that it will be able to be better instead of just trusting something that for some reason we had a delusional experience or at least it hasn't been able to reach our expectation. And that's the major risk. With many of the top 10, top 20 blockchains, many of us are already having an experience. And due to the bear market with many of these assets, the experience will not be great. Not because the technology, not because the project is bad, but for the simple reason that first of all, we are still, we are still talking about experimental technologies. It means that what we are using is something that should be improved. 
The point is, unfortunately, this bear market has stopped the growth path in the middle. And in this moment, the only path is a downtrend and nobody likes to uh, lose money. That's the reason why many will have a bad experience with this asset because they have already lost a lot of money. And this can push this family of people to search for other technologies and to trust more technologies that are just promising something new that are pumping for the simple reason that they are just launching or for the simple reason that because the price were so low that growing is much easier or maybe there is some speculator that is manipulating the price and can pump the price of an asset, attracting more people and pushing people to go from the old technology to the new one. What I'm trying to say is that don't be too focused on fundamental because right now fundamentals are unfortunately not the only trigger that will push to success each project or, or a certain project. Unfortunately, you have to start thinking about the mind process, how people are thinking and what are the intrinsic triggers that can push people to join, to embrace a certain project instead of another one. And the idea of having lost money, that's something that, is, that nobody loves. That's the reason why, for example, I think that the story of Luna has come to an end. I think that it's really unlikely to see Luna pumping again into the next future. For sure, or at least in my opinion, it will be really difficult that in the next bull run, Luna will have some space. Maybe at the beginning, but I think that most likely the kind of journey has simply ended. For the simple reason that people are not, are quite scared and are still have vivid in their memory the bad experience that they had in uh, uh, that blockchain. So everything to say that, guys, with any probability, this uh, top, this rank will change a lot. What are the incumbents? What are the new players that are coming? Well, according to how long this bear market will last, could be players that have started, uh, uh, let's say, 2019, 2020, 2021, and so on. Because remember, guys, it's not so easy to build a layer one that is solid and so on. It's not just a matter of forking ETH or any other blockchain and just improving some kind, some line of code. That's not what is needed. The kind of process that you needed to develop a solid blockchain, it is much longer. So maybe projects that have started during that period. On the other side, if this bear market will last, let's say, three years, other four years, in that case, it is possible that projects that have started just right now, that are starting right now, or maybe the next year, will be the most favorable ones because they will have a better time. So be aware that the length of this bear market will change everything. So don't rush anything, but take your time to understand in which moment we can start to think positively and we can start to look after the uh, next 100x. I will talk uh, much uh, more in depth about that into one of my next videos. But let's have a look on a couple of projects that are working, that are launching right now and that they could be interesting. The first blockchain that I want to show you is Say Network. This is the website, don't worry if uh, I will go quite fast through the different projects because in this video I don't want to compare them because there are many of them and it is just too early to try to dig for real into the technology. I want to just present them just to give you a starting point from which you can dig by yourself. So for this reason, into the description below, you will find all the links. I will just try to uh, emphasize what is quite interesting in the various cases. For example, on the case of Say, it is interesting to see that they are talking about uh, and they are speaking like a new DeFi design space. That's quite significant because until this bull run, when we were talking about layer one, everyone was just saying about uh, the number of uh, uh, transactions that uh, that kind of blockchain is able to process, uh, uh, which kind of uh, uh, algorithm from uh, the validation they were using and so on. In this case, we are starting to, to be more focused, not just on technicalities, but much more on the use case 
that's something that is great because it is a sign of more maturity for the market because obviously usually we are just talking for technical people after that we are starting to talk for normal people and talking about DeFi, this is something that all of us are able to understand it so in this case they will try to build a technology a blockchain that will enable the maximum for the uh, DeFi space and that's something that is a great point of communication i want to show you also this comparison among say aptus sui solana i made also a video about aptus and sui if you missed that one i will leave also the link in the right corner here and as you can see here they are giving you a couple of more details about uh, the technicalities and also why what kind of modules they are using and so on personally speaking i don't really care what they want to really uh, use from the technical point of view because at the end of the story what we need is the final result so that's the reason why i think that this kind of approach uh, talking about a vertical like DeFi could be really useful because uh, one of the questions i'm receiving most of the time is there is enough space for all of these blockchains and the answer is yes probably there is not enough space for just horizontal technologies because in that case it's really difficult to understand the diversity among one project to another but if each of them is starting to focus on something specific this is something that will enable them to uh, get a spot a hype into a specific industry so i think that in the next future we will see much more blockchain layer one that instead of just saying that we are doing everything they will say we are doing this specific case the next step will be we are doing this specific case using this specific ingredient magic technique that will enable us to solve this problem because as always when we are talking about the communication and marketing we are talking about we are starting with a general promise and after that we will go each time in narrowing the focus in order to help people to understand which problem exactly that technology is solving going on because the same trend is something that we can uh, get from other blockchains and layer one that are launching right now in this case the keyword is web free as you will see in a moment many of these layer ones are pushing on this concept web free is becoming the main way to recognize blockchain technologies is not anymore to talk about a uh, blockchain or cryptocurrencies most of the projects are talking about web free so creating an environment technologies that will enabling us to uh, take advantage to use the web to browser internet uh, using technologies that are a uh, blockchain based and in this case as you can see rewarding architects of web3 a layer one blockchain designed to reward creators as i was telling you before they are doing a promising that is not just we are building a layer one blockchain that is fast we are building a layer one blockchain to reward so to give what does it mean rewarding it means that if you are giving power to each category developer artist and so on to control their work to own their data in that way they will also be enabled to be rewarded much easier for their work going on we have laconic that is another blockchain build and fast frictionless and verifiable web free in this case i'm not a lover of this kind of definition because as i was telling you just a moment before i think that is too late just to say fast frictionless and verifiable web free i would rather prefer to see projects that are explaining in a much more uh, easy and a way that i can visualize what kind of problem they are solving in any case i think that uh, as i was telling at the beginning accordingly to how long this bear market will last we can see these different projects evolving in a certain direction or another because the point is that something that with any probably you have already noticed many projects are trying to postpone their uh, deliverables they are trying to keep the best for the moment when uh, the market will start again to pump in order to get the maximum hype in the right moment because as we have said many times 
timing is important. So for this reason, we can see different projects pivoting because they will have plenty of time if this bear market will last. Because even if they were going into one direction until now, they could have the opportunity to change the focus into the next future. In any case, also in this case, I will leave you the link into the description below so you can check much more in depth what they are doing. Going on, Celestia is a, a modular blockchain. You can think to this uh, blockchain like uh, Cosmos, something like that, so, or Polkadot. So an ecosystem that uh, is uh, enabling others, users to uh, deploy their own blockchain. So it, it will be an ecosystem of blockchains. So creating a technology that can scale thanks to the ability to add, to use, these uh, different modules, as you can see down here. If usually we have a, a monolithic architecture, so it means that uh, the smart contract, the consensus and uh, the execution layer are together. In this case, we are dividing them. So each uh, layer, smart contract, execution and consensus are uh, diversified. In this way, you can use, you can call the layer as you prefer. And the concept here you can find, for example, secure inter interoperability for all Celestia chains. As you can see, in this case, we are talking about an ecosystem of blockchains that are interacting together. They are using the same uh, consensus layer and the same uh, security level. And it can scale because uh, Celestia does not validate transactions. It's just a, a way to share the different modules, the consensus and so on. Also, in this case, you will find the link in the description below. Going on, because uh, I'm going fast, sorry guys, but uh, I want to share much more of them because I want to give you the first input to start digging. I don't know which of them will be the next 100x. I don't know if they will be able to uh, keep the promise that they have uh, made and if they will be able to succeed. But what I know is that the more of them you know, the more you are staying on track, the more you are digging, the higher is the probability for you to find out the next 100x. As you can see, in this case, we are talking about Web3 Realized. And what is peculiar by this blockchain, it is an identity-based blockchain. If you're wondering what does it mean, identity-based, it means that the focal point will be the identity of something. This something could be an organization, a person, a thing. And that's really important because in the moment when you can identify something clearly into the blockchain, not only, as you can see, human readable address, that's something that is also quite interesting because the more we are simplifying the experience for the average user to uh, understand, to read addresses, to use the blockchain, higher is the probability for it to succeed. Also, in this case, there is a multi-chain support that at this point is something that is quite, should be at least quite obvious. Another blockchain, another layer one that is interesting is Kudos that is just launching right now the uh, mainnet. You can also apply for a grant and your decentralized cloud computing network. As you can see, they are talking about cloud computing networks. So accessing cloud computing in a decentralized uh, way. So we are talking about uh, uh, accessing different kind, in this case, uh, the ability not just to have a blockchain, but focused on cloud computing on a decentralized technology. So everything about scalability, interoperability and so on is focused in order to solve the problems related to cloud computing network. Uh, you can also go for the, the mainnet and here you can know more about the mainnet that is just launching right now. Also in this case, I will leave all the links into the description below. Going to the last uh, blockchain that I want to share with you today is called Chromia, the relational blockchain platform that makes sense. As you can see, in this case, we are having a storytelling that uh, is slightly different. It's a blockchain platform making it easy for people to build decentralized app for better world. Uh, and that's another way to present uh, a blockchain. I don't know if this project will be able 
to uh, succeed, but I find quite curious to see how they are presenting themselves, and I like this uh, uh, playful way to tell this is Chromia for uh, games, that's also the reason why they are using this kind of tone of voice, and you can see that there is a big difference from just uh, is saying we are building a blockchain to create a contest where the whole storytelling is coherent to the kind of applications that you want to offer. Personally speaking, I would rather prefer to see just one focus instead of Chromia for Games, Chromia for Enterprise, Chromia for DeFi, for fair application and so on. I would rather prefer to see the project dividing much more its focus uh, with uh, specific brands for each of the area that they want to approach. But uh, I like the kind of experiments that they are trying to uh, move on. Here you can also uh, apply for Metaverse Grant, uh, Innovation Lab, and you can check the white paper. Guys, let me know what is your favorite one. Let me know if there is another blockchain that is doing something that is interesting into the comment section below. And don't forget to leave us a big thumbs up and drop a comment. And I will see you soon with another video. Bye, guys.